Along this video, we are continuing our discussion of the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, The Lesson We Learn. And this is video number 19. Join me. Hello, welcome to Take a Step to a Better You. Today we are continuing our discussion of the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And this is video number 19. But if you are new here, my name is Sharifa Nakarima, I'm a business owner here in Virginia, USA. And on this channel, I share business tips, YouTube tips, and money online tips. I record motivational ones. And then I added books recently, uh, good books. So please, if you are new here, consider subscribing and sharing the message. And for those of you who've been here already, who's are supporting every day i see you i appreciate you and i respond to your comments so please when you come here always please leave a comment that's how i know that you are supporting the message that's the only way i would know otherwise if, if that's how you put your name <laughs> on this message and i'm assuming you already subscribed and clicked on that bell so that you get notified when i have new videos i have new videos daily but I'm going to share my schedule at the end of this lesson because there are people here who came just because of the lesson. But if you don't know my schedule, I'm going to share at the beginning, at the end of this video. And also, I'm going to show you how to share how you get this book to listen for free, audible for one month. Or if you also want to buy uh, a, a, a copy, a physical copy, I'll, I'll talk about that at the end. But what I need to mention now that if you are new, this is video number 19. I started this discussing this book, starting with the background, and it will be going, going, going. But I have a list, a pinned comment. Like when you go to the comment section, up the top comment is mine, and it has a, a link that takes you to all the ones we've done. From number one to number 18, all you have to do is click and they start playing. And also the same link is in the description below in the box, and also at the end of this video in the end box, you'll see end screen, you see that uh, there is a, co a connection to that list. It's a list, I call it lessons from Robert Kiyosaki. That's the one that has all of them. Now, I have to say today, because this is lesson, we started lesson number two, but today I felt like, oh, we have recorded so many messages. I mean, we have watched so many videos. Even you who have been following me and re uh, uh, listen to these and watching all of them. I thought today I need to review the lessons again because Richard Dad uh, says there are six lessons in this book, and I mentioned them at the beginning, but I felt like I need to mention them again. There are six, and lesson number one is the rich don't work for money. We finish that in in uh, chapter one. You know, the book has chapter six chapters and six lessons. So now we're in chapter two, which the lesson is why financial literacy. But before I continue, I want to go through all of them so we are all on the same page about the six lessons that we're going to cover by the end of the book. Hoping we'll finish it, right? Number three is mind your own business. Number four is the history of taxes and the power of corporations. Number five, the rich invent money. Number six, work to learn, don't work for money. So those are the six lessons we'll cover before we finish this book. But we're still on lesson number two. I started lesson number two in video number 18. This is video number 19. We are continuing. But you know, always before I continue, I would like to review to who Rich Dad is, who, who Robert Kiyosaki is. Sorry. Robert Kiyosaki, in the self-made millionaire. And by the way, he appears on, on my channel, on the ads. Do you see him? He sometimes starts this video, my videos. He comes on. That's Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, he decides to put his ads on my videos. <laughs> I don't know why. So he's a self-made millionaire, entrepreneur, educator, and inventor. And he has a big mission of, uh, he wants to elevate the financial well-being of humanity, starting with one life and one person at a time. And I mentioned in my previous videos that you could be that person and you could be also helping with his message, which I think is a good message, a good mission. Because 
the points he says here, because I remember when I first heard of when things he was saying, like savers are losers, brokers are broke. People were saying, this man is rude. But actually he was saying things. They are true. They are true. So let's follow this book and see where it ends us. And please, I suggested recently that please get a notebook and note these things. Because we tend to hear something and it makes sense, but then we forget. But take a note and see what you can apply in your own life. The book is called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. He named it like that because of the two dads he has. And one dad is his real dad. The one he called the poor dad. Although I don't think he was a poor, a poor man, but that's what he tried to call him because he ended up being broke. But he wasn't really a poor man because he was a very intelligent man, very well educated with a PhD, and he was a superintendent of education. And then the rich dad is a dad to his friend, his friend Mike. And this one left school at the age 13, age grade, and he ended up becoming the one of the wealthiest men in Hawaii. He learned his lesson, his lessons from the rich dad, the ones we were as this is the ones we are focused on learning. Because what happened, at some point he had to decide. He was watching both men and he decided which one to follow as far as the lessons that were better. So I'm continuing today, but I have to still remind you where we ended with lesson uh, with uh, lesson two in the previous video, and which was number 18. We ended it. Robert, when you see me reading, I already got a note from the book, and then at some point I'll go to the book, but very shortly today. We ended uh, the the lesson Lesson two in video 18, I had just started it, and Robert had told a story of rich businessmen who ended up, uh, some, he was naming names. If you have the physical book, he may name the real names of those businessmen, the rich businessmen, like uh, who ended up in prison, uh, committed suicide, uh, there's one that went insane. So I'm just like speaking out, just the point that these were rich men, but see how their lives ended. And he said that the lesson from that is that money without financial intelligence is money soon gone. Remember, we are in lesson two, and this lesson two is that why financial literacy. That's the lesson we are on. Financial education is so, so important. So it's not, and he said it in the previous video, it's not how much money you make, it's how much money you keep. So, continuing now on the on what we are doing in lesson uh, 19 today. Uh, no, in video 19. He starts off uh, telling a story of it's the continuation from what we were in the uh, in the previous video. He tells a story of a young basket a young basketball player who had millions. He had, he had millions and lost the money claiming, and this is, according to him, it was in the news when this happened. Maybe when I finish this, you recognize the story if you are a baseball fan, that he, he lost the money, the millions, and he claimed that his friends, his attorney, his accountants took his money. He ended up working at a car wash, but he was fired at that car wash from that car wash job because he refused to take off his championship, championship ring. As he was wiping off like the cars, he was cleaning the cars, they told him to remove the ring, he said no. He was appealing, after he was fired, he was appealing, claiming hardship and discrimination. And uh, that the ring is all he had, he had left. And if he's, he's stripped it away, he, he will crumble. If it's stripped away, He'll crumble. Although I don't really understand, were they taking the ring? They were asking to remove it, I think, from the finger. So you can keep it, still your ring. That's all, like, I think he felt like nothing without the ring. That's so sad, actually. That's just my opinion. So, I'm going to now read. Just a short period today, a short read. It's not going to be a long one. Uh, after he's, he's told that story, he said, now it's Robert saying, I know so many people who became instant millionaires 
And while I'm glad some people have become richer and richer, I caution them that in the long run, it's not how much money you make. It's how much money, it's how much you keep. And for how many generations you keep it. So when people ask, I mean, ask him, when people ask, where do I get started? Oh, tell me how to get rich quick. They often are greatly disappointed in my answer. I simply say to them what my rich dad said to me when I was a little kid. If you want to be rich, you need to be financially literate. Remember, that's the lesson. And then I skipped something there. Now I'm continuing. If you are going to build the Empire State Building, the first thing you need to do is dig a deep hole and power a strong foundation. If you are strong, if you are going to build a home, I'm sorry, if you're going to build a home in the suburbs, all you need to do is power a six inch slab of concrete, most uh, of concrete. Most people in their drive to get rich are trying to build an Empire State Building on a six inch slab. Our school system, created in the agrarian age, still believes in homes with no foundation. Dirt floors are still the rate. So kids graduate from school with virtually no financial education, financial foundation. One day, sleepless and deep in debt in suburbia, living the American dream, they decide that the answer to their financial problem is to find a way to get rich quick. Construction on the skyscraper, skyscraper begins. It goes up quickly, and soon, instead of the Empire State Building, we have the land tower of Sabadia, the sleepless nights return. In, uh, he's using these images, but actually to uh, give us a, a point, make the point strong that we really need to learn, and also getting rich, you can't just get rich quick, like you see on the internet, they say, oh, you do this, and then you get a million and all that stuff. But keeping that million, you may actually get it, but will you have it tomorrow? That's what he's talking about. Okay, I'm going to start stop the reading here in this, uh, in this video today, but there is a point he makes, and I'm going to add my two cents on it too. He says, rich people acquire assets. The poor and the middle class acquire liabilities that they think are assets. I'm going to read it again. Rich people acquire assets, but the poor people and middle class uh, acquire liabilities that they think are assets. And I wanted to add on my two cents on that because what he means, rich people, for, let me give you an example. When a rich person acquires an asset of a house, he may rent out that house. And, and I gave an example in one of the videos where he collects, like after he pays all the expenses on the house, on renting the house, he has the cash flow left, maybe $500 a month. He That's income or, or like cash flow, positive cash flow. But for the poor person or the middle class person, they think of a house, a house they live in like it's an asset or a car they drive like it's an asset, which is, for me, the first time I heard that, I, I actually learned it from Robert. Because I thought that if I bought my house, the house I live in, I have an asset. But no, it's not an asset because you live in it. There's no, the, the simple definition of an asset, according to him, is it has to bring in money to you, to your pocket. In fact, he says, you bring, puts money in your pocket, then it's an asset. If you spend something, money on something, it's not an asset, it's a liability. So if you have a house you live in and you're spending all this money on it, and also, if your car you drive, you're spending money on it, those are liabilities. So don't be so happy, uh, according to him, because you just bought a, a car you drive or a house you live in. Only if, like, you just bought a, uh, like, apartments, complex, you're renting them out. And then those also, there are issues that go in that. You could be making losses. Those are now deep things. Uh, that's not the, the topic today, because you have, he has books where he teaches that even if you are in rental properties, you have to be careful. You have to have positive cash flow. 
because you could be making losses. It's like a business that's making losses. Okay? So that's the point. That's where we're going to end today. Think about acquiring assets where you bring money into your pocket. Like every month, money come, come through. Then you know you're on the right track. Uh, for those, I promise to share the schedule. I'm done with the lesson for today. Um, um, uh, this is for those who are new here. I record videos every every day, every day except Friday when I have a live, uh, and the live comes at the same time when I normally uh, publish. Uh, I call it publishing, but actually premiering videos. I premiere them at daily at one p.m. USA Eastern Time. Please check your list. Please check your Google, uh, Google, and see what that converts to. 1 p.m. USA Eastern Time. You know, USA has many zones. So when you find that, that's the always. I have, uh, God willing, if I'm still here, I'm uploading every day around that time. It may be off at 15 minutes, maybe become 1 15, but the intention is one. Just Google when you're setting up a video. Sometimes you can't catch that. They break them into 15, 15 minutes blocks. So if you come and have just 14 minutes less, left, to 1 p.m., you can't schedule it that, like that. You have to. To put it in the next block so it comes at 115. Some of you have noticed maybe when you got the video and they say 115 instead of one means when I was uploading it, it was I had already the, lost the block of 15 minutes to one, so I have to take the next one. So 1 p.m. USA stand time is books. Right, we are still writing this one. Remember, you're still lesson two, we are continuing, and then I, before I started books, I had my old schedule, which was on Thursdays and Sundays. Thursdays, 12.30 p.m. Eastern. 30 means earlier. And then on Thursdays, I tend to, uh, to cover business tips and YouTube tips. And then on Sunday, that's what I con consider to be my main video because it's for everyone. It's motivational. I tend to be talking to all of you, everyone watching me. I consider that a message that's relevant to everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me, please. So that's my schedule. And then for those who want to have this, I have a link below. If you want to listen audio, you can go have it for one month. Make sure you are choosing a premium. It's Audible, uh, Amazon Audible. Only the link below takes you through my website, honestsoul.com. But there's a page for Audible. I'm an Amazon associate. I'll tell you that. And if you want to support me, you can choose to shop your Amazon from my website. You don't lose anything, but I earn a small commission. But for this one, I don't earn anything. It's free. So go uh, sign up and choose premium. They will say you have a credit. That means you can get a premium book like this one. But if you want the other books, it's free. You're going to get, don't, it doesn't have to be premium. It has to be a normal, regular account. And Audible, you get free podcasts unlimited for one month. Free for one month. So please check that out. But for those uh, of you also who want a physical book, I have actually a link on that page that I have uh, below this video in the description. When you click, it takes you to my website, but also there is this book. You will see the image. You click on it. You can go and, and get it. This That time you have to buy. But the free one, choose podcast. And for those of you who are keep coming, I have to say I'm recording this one on March 1st. I had said that let's see how this community is growing. Or people who are listening, it has not grown the way I was hoping. So if you want to invite some more people, I said we have to get to 5-0. Five, zero. Five, zero, 50 before I can give you access to my account. But uh, seeing the same people, which is great, but we need newer people to come and join us. So make a new community. I, mean, I can create maybe a group for you and then give you access to my account so you can listen to all the books you want, our podcasts. Uh, but as I'm, I'm still not there yet, please invite more people. That's my video today. Please leave a comment. Always leave a comment. Uh, what do you think? What do you get from this lesson? And yeah, are you, do you want us to continue with this style, the way I'm doing it? Or you want to put some input? Or could go, go faster? I could read and just get out points. I wouldn't go like slowly the way I'm going. Because now it's like you are reading the book. <laughs> I'm, I'm covering most of the stuff. Okay, please leave a comment and like before you leave a comment. You see, it's not happening. I see the likes are, the comments are more than the likes. Please do both. Like the video or like the video while you're still watching me so you don't forget. 
and share, share with others, invite them to come, join this community. I intend to do big things on, in this community, invite more people. Like I always end them, take very good care of yourself. Take very good care of your families. Take very good care of your health. Take a step to better you. Bye-bye.